Hi there, this is Matt Heffernan. Welcome back to my channel. This is the eighth episode in my Slivey Vlogs series, which is my weekly, more unscripted and unedited, off-the-cuff sort of video, just to kind of show you where things are, are going on my channel and some of the things I've got going. And uh, this one's a, a special one. This is going to be the uh, proper announcement of a, an actual project that I have, a new game. And it's going to be for the ZX Spectrum. And uh, that's the title of this video, Pop Goes a Specky. And Pop is the uh, tentative name at this point of what the game is going to be called. Anybody uh, that is a little more familiar with the gigantic software library of the Specky could <laughs> let me know if there is already a game called Pop that is well known. Uh, then I may, I may change it at that point. But as you can see here by this little uh, snippet of graphics, it's uh, there's a little bubble action going, a few colored bubbles. And well, well, that means that, as you can see, if you go to the uh, new uh, repo that I have up on GitHub, it's a uh, puzzle bobble type game. It's not something that I had seen done for the ZX Spectrum, of course, Puzzle Bobble uh, is, uh, for those not familiar, was a game that was created by Tato as sort of a uh, franchise uh, expansion of, buzzle, of Bubble Bobble. And uh, when it came to North America, at least, it had been had its name changed to Bust a Move. There's been a lot of different variations of this game where basically it's just a color matching game. It's a, more of a casual game, but uh, there's a, a, a bit more uh, reaction skill involved. And it's a you know, very addicting, uh, satisfying kind of game, easy to get into, but that can get you know very difficult uh, as you go on. And it gives you the opportunity for adding a lot of uh, personality to it with some of the little little side bits are, are can, can all be you know amusing because like I said the original Tato one it was taking the little uh, bubble bobble characters and making them sort of the mascots for the game you weren't playing with the bubble bobble characters those little dragon guys you were just uh just sort of aiming uh, colored bubbles at a stack of uh, descending bubbles and trying to not get crushed by the onslaught of the bubbles so I, I, this is a game that I had thought about before, uh, trying to create a, a puzzle bobble type game for the Atari 2600. That was something I was going to do instead of the Alice game, but I, I couldn't figure out a way to make it really work with the extreme limitations of the 2600. So what you can see here are the, uh, the graphics that I'm uh, programming right now. I don't have a, a live demo to show at this point, but it will be uh, like this so that you can have five different colors of bubbles. Of course, like Puzzle Bobble, the most versions, including the original, you start out with, say, three different colors of bubbles, which makes it easier. But eventually, you know, you, you have the ability in later levels to go up to four and then five different colors of bubbles, and then it makes it a lot harder to make matches. And, of course, the arrangement of the bubbles makes the the kinds of matches harder and you know you get the time <laughs> the time limit and you've got like this hydraulic press sort of coming down on you so the bubbles are getting closer and closer so you got to start popping them before they get close too close to you so what i figured out was with the uh the zx spectrum was that there's a, enough information there enough uh of leeway that you can create alternating rows of bubbles and never have more than two colors within one uh, little tile space. And that's what I'm also going to have to do for this is create a tile engine. Now I'm sure that there's a million different variations of a tile engine made for the ZX Spectrum, but I'm, I'm rolling my own as more of a learning exercise for myself. And uh, just uh, as I'm familiarizing myself more with uh, Z80 assembly language and with the ZX Spectrum, uh, sort of the, the memory layout, the hardware layout, just to, to get used to doing that sort of thing, because yeah, you don't have traditional tile RAM, tile VRAM, like you do in a, a lot of other systems, like, say, the Commodore 64 or a uh, Nintendo or, of course, the Commander X16. 
which uh, if you've seen my Commander X16 videos, you've seen how I've dealt with tiles in there. And so I'm doing the same thing here. Of course, you've only got a uh, one bit per pixel tiles that you can create. Um, and so that's what I did. I created a set of tiles so you can have sort of like this arrangement of bubbles or like this arrangement of bubbles. And it all works with a grand total of uh, 34 different uh, tiles. Well, um, I mean, I guess there's 35 because there is a, a blank uh, that blank tile that's all uh, paper. This is an all ink tile down here because I'm generally using black as the ink and white as the the paper for the black areas and because just to have the consistency where I'm always using white as the paper color and then having these other different colors the red blue magenta green and cyan as the ink colors for the different colored bubbles so you can see here basically i'm splitting it up into uh odd and even layers the odd layers are wider and the the even or the rows rather the even rows are are fitting up snug underneath them and they're going to be a little narrower so what you'll be able to get across the whole sheet or the whole uh, the whole screen as you can see here is you're going to have sort of eight bubbles wide on the uh, on the odd rows and seven bubbles wide on the even rows and the way they're going to work out sort of color wise is that if you were to just have um just plain uh <laughs> all uh, just either all ink or all paper tiles what you would see would be crosses effectively for the uh, for the even rows and squares for the odd rows but as you can see here it works out so we're, we have crosses for the even ones because we have sort of that central square with a little reflection on there just to be cute and then we sort of round out uh, going around each way but you'll notice here in these corners there the the color is not seeping on into there because we need to have the black here for the rest of it so uh, that's how it worked out and then uh for the even rows and then for the odd rows uh, i've just got the four so i have that exact same circle shape the exact same outer uh sort of uh, rind of the bubble which is <laughs> has to be rather thick because of these limitations uh, that we can see here i am now instead of splitting up into five uh, different tiles it's only into four tiles uh, all centered around a four corners instead of centered around one big tile like the like the odd rows and then that's it then i i can have this other circle i i may tweak the the shape of these bubbles but right now it's very very specifically designed so that it can be consistent from uh, row to row so that the the user the player would not necessarily be able to tell what those tile layouts are and like yeah if we look here at the little sort of faked out screen cap i have uh you look at this you don't know where which are odd rows and which are are even rows necessarily they just they just all look like the same kind of bubbles that are sort of getting up close to each other and then yeah once you would if say if i had another green bubble over here I could fire another green bubble that would touch one of those and then you'd have three green bubbles and those green bubbles disappear and like these hangers on would would go away with it so i've got a lot of stuff to figure out in terms of what kind of animation i'm going to do what it's going to look like but i've got the whole tile thing figured out i've got most of the code written for um for composing the the tile map i need to still do the rendering of the tile map um, but I've got all the actual, uh, like the, creating a, a bunch of tile indexes, which you can see here in my code in pop.asm. I create this tile map, a 32 by 24 tile map. I initialize it all to zero. And that's where I, I sort of compose my own tile map. And then I'm going to be able to go through there and build the, uh, the bitmap based on those tiles. And here I created another file called tiles.asm. And here I have just in binary each row of this eight byte data lines at a time. They've got uh, a whole tile for each line, basically. And so you can see here that tile zero is all paper. And then eventually we get down here and it's all length. So all FFs 
eight FFs in a row for all ink. And then everything in between, these are the same tiles that I sort of uh, planned out here on this spreadsheet. And it, it all eventually comes together to make this. And then I'm working on the code over here at uh, bubbles.asm. I'm not going to go through all this code right yet, but you know, I got a few lookup tables, uh, sort of got this initial spot where here, this is uh, where how I'm going to experiment with the rendering. This is going to be the uh, default layout of these rows. And I'll just, you know, go in here and replace these different numbers, the numbers corresponding to the different colors. And zero would be no bubble there at all. And, and I'll I'll be able to play with that to make sure that this algorithm and these lookup tables I created and all the tiles that I defined all come out to be what what they need to be in order for this game to work. And so yeah, so that's what I'm going to just do initially is uh, call this fill rows uh, here in bubbles.asm and that's going to fill up all this uh, this tile map with all the tile indices and it will also at the same time set all the color attribute data based on the the colors that were specified up here in uh, bubbles.asm so we're gonna have all of that all set and then it's just gonna sort of just display it uh, it's gonna do the call render tiles and that will convert the tile map to the bitmap and, and just sort of write all of that to the screen RAM. And it'll just sort of do that in, in a loop. I, you can see here I'm just doing a one shot, but eventually this will just be a loop just to test that rendering. And then eventually I'll get into all the stuff like the window dressing around it and the um, the actual game mechanics, uh, the the physics of the balls bouncing, of uh, shooting in different directions. So we're going to have to uh, do a, a few mathy things where we're uh, we're aiming a bubble and making sure that it's intuitive for the user that when they're aiming that bubble, that it's going to go where in in the direction that they're expecting it to go they may be off because it's their fault but not the game's fault <laughs> so that's what we're going to try to do and that's it that's all i got to show for now uh but what i'm going to be doing on some of my vlogs is uh just showing more and more of this as i develop it when i don't have other uh subjects for the vlogs it'll just be where i'm at with this and uh, meanwhile, if, if you want to see these things before they're ready for public, you can join these folks here on my Patreon. The, the link is right here in the description and as you can see on the screen. And, uh, and these folks get to have early access ad-free to all this content, uh, not just the vlogs, but also my main episodes. And the uh, tutorial series for the ZX Spectrum will be coming out soon. So that will, uh, you'll be seeing that along with uh, even more episodes. Uh, I've got a few more episodes of the Commander X16 tutorial series and uh, some other surprises and fun things coming out. So stay tuned and I, I hope to see you again here soon. Bye-bye.